Hello everybody, today we are going to see how LS directional valve work. In first, you can subscribe to the YouTube channel for follow the next video, and you can find this course in the right hand version. You will find the link under the video. The force 3 LS directional valve is progressive or proportional. The control can be manual, electric, or hydraulic. It's used in mobile application, public works, and agricultural. It's used to manage the speed of the cylinder and to facilitate the driving of the machines. Simultaneous movements are possible. The LS directional valve can be connected to fixed or variable displacement pump. Here we have four three LS directional valve block. For educational reason, the directional valve is divided into four parts. Zero input plate. Here we have two slides of directional valve. 16. Closing plate. P. Pressure inlet. T. Return to the tank. LS. Connection to the pump if we use a variable dispersion pump. M. Pressure gauge connection. 1. Fixed dispersion hydraulic pump. 2. Engine. 3. Restriction. 4. Tank. 5. Pressure relief valve adjustment screw. 6. Spring of the pilot stage of the pressure relief valve, set at 190 bar. 7. Spring of the pressure balance, 10 bars. 8. Plug. To be modified of configuration with the variable displacement pump. 9. Manual level control. 10. Adjustable spool stop. Maximum flow adjustment. 11. Spool return spring. 12. Spool with holes. The representation is nozzle on the diagram. 13. Shuttle valve to select the height pressure. 14. Cylinder with a load 100 bar. 15. Cylinder with a load 50 bar. When the fixed dispersion pump is driven by the engine at working speed, 100 liters per minute go to the circuits. We see that the port P is closed by the center of the directional valve. The else line is decompressed at the tank by the center of the directional valve. There is no pressure which is added to the balance spring. The oil from the pump returns to the tank by the pressure balance to 10 bar. It's the standby pressure. When the operator operates the directional valve control, for example 10% of the set points, the spool gradually shifts according to the set points and the standby pressure, 10 bar, goes to the LS line by the spool hoses. The shuttle valve moves and the 10 bar pressure is returned to the spring box of the pressure balance. Instantly, the pressure balance close. The pump accumulates oil in the circuit and the pressure rises until the cylinder moves. The cylinder moves and the pressure can change. The pressure of the load is returned by the LS line to the balance of spring. The excess flow, which cannot pass to the directional valve, returns to the tank via the pressure balance at 110 bar. 100 bar load more 10 bar spring. There is a delta P pressure difference of 10 bar at the directional valve terminals. If the load on the cylinder increases, for example 150 bar, the pressure balance will be informed thanks to the LX control and the excess flow of the pump with all way return to the tank by raising the pressure balance at 160 bar. 150 bar of load more 10 bar from the balance spring. By keeping the delta P of 10 bar, it can be seen that the cylinder will maintain its speed. This is Bernoulli's theorem. The flow rate in the restriction changes according to the pressure difference. Here operate the two directional valve commands in the same way. I will explain to you how the pressure increases in the circuit in order to understand that the two cylinders come out the same time the pressure rise is speed and invisible to the operator. 
I recall you in standby. We have 10 bar, and the whole the pump flow returns to the tank by, by the pressure balance. When the operator operates the two directional valve control on the same time, the standby pressure returns to the piloting via this shuttle valve or this one on the LS pressure balance and the pressure in the circuit increases to 20 bar. 10 bar pressure LS more 10 bar spring. But 20 bar are not enough to get the cylinder out. This 20 bar I loop it back to the LS balance and the pressure at the pump outlet tries to 30 bar. 20 bar of the LS pressure or 10 bar of spring. But 30 bar are not enough to get the cylinder out. This entire system loops back up to 50 bar at the pump outlet. At 50 bar, the cylinder 15 take off, but not the cylinder 14. The shuttle valve moves and the pressure of the 50 bar comes back to the spring LS. The pressure at the outlet of the pump increases to 60 bar. 50 bar LS pressure more 10 bar spring. This entire system loops up to 100 bar at the pump outlet. At 100 bar, the cylinder 14 take off and the two cylinders start at the same time. I repeat, two cylinders start at the same time. The 100 bar of the load are come back to the LS pressure balance and the excess flow from the pump returns to the tank via the pressure balance at 110 bar. 100 bar of load, more 10 bar of spring. It can be seen that the cylinder which 50 bar of load comes out more quickly because the delta P at the terminals of the directional valve is 60 bar, with the cylinder which the 100 bar of the load has a delta P of 10 bars. For the same same point, there are for example 10 liters per minute going to the cylinder 14 and 12 liters per minute going to the cylinder 15. The excess flow, 78 liters per minute, return to the tank by the pressure balance. When the cylinder 15 arrives in the mechanic stop, the oil instantly accumulates in the cylinder and the pressure rise. The delta P is removed at the terminal of the directional valve. The shuttle valves move. The pump outlet pressure is come back to the pressure balance by the LS pilotage. The pressure balance closes. The oil accumulates in the circuit and increases at 190 bar set by the pilot stage item 6. When the pilot valves open, the pressure behind the restriction, item 3, cannot change because all the oil that, that can be passed in the restriction, for example, 1 liter per minute, returns to the tank by the pilot stage at 190 bar. The pump flow is 100 liters per minute. The oil accumulates in the circuit. The pressure increases at 200 bar in M1, 190 bar of the pilot stage, more 10 bar of the pressure spring. At this time, the pressure balance opens, the excess flow, 84 liters per minute, returns to the tank. The cylinder 14 continues its stroke and accelerates because the delta P at the terminals of the directional valve increases to 100 bars. In conclusion, the 4-3 LS directional valve is used to manage the speed of the receiver. This type of the distribution facilitates the operation of machines such as excavator or crane, for example. However, the speed of the receiver not be sure when working at the same time. For easier driving, it is possible to install the LS directional valve with individual pressure balance. The speed of the cylinder will be the same when they are moving at the same time. The LS directional valve can be configured to operate with a fixed or variable dispersion pump. We need to do a modification in the inlet plate. It's over for today. Don't hesitate to ask your question and you can find my other service, training, advice by visiting the website. See you soon for new videos.